Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel The Bushcraft Padawan. Regular viewers and subscribers will know that at least once a month since February of this year, we're now in October, since February of this year I've tried to get out at least once a month to do an overnighter in some of my local woodland to practice new skills, to refresh old skills and also to see the sort of woods and the seasons change throughout the year as part of the year-long tree and plant ID masterclass that I'm doing. Here we are, we're at the end of October, so it was time for me to drag my carcass out again down to my local woodland and to spend some time out in the woods doing just that. If you've been watching these monthly overnighters regularly, you will know that I don't just like to come out for the sake of it, I always try and come out with something very specific in mind that I'm looking to gain from that particular overnighter. Something that I want to practice, something that I want to try for the first time. And this month, October, is no exception. So what is it that I want to get out of this particular overnighter? I recently did a video, I'll link to it up here, where I was out trying to get a fire going out in some very, very wet conditions, some very damp conditions. And a few people left me some feedback, quite rightly so, that my ferro rod technique could be improved. Now I know, because I've seen lots of people demo it and I've tried it myself, that a good technique is to keep the knife still and to draw the rod towards you. That way you can kind of focus the sparks. However, in the video, I can quite clearly see myself doing the opposite keeping the ferro rod still and pushing the knife down it, which usually for me leads to a less concentrated focus of spark. So a few people left that feedback. They were quite right to do so because it was an area for improvement. So that's something that I'm going to practice more during this overnighter. I also want to have a little play around with some pine resin. Again, link into a video up here. Back in the summer, there was a pine tree near us that had some significant damage done to it. Lots of resin came out. I was able to pot some of that resin and I'm going to try and experiment with that to see if that takes a spark or if I have to light it with a lighter, does it lead to a more sustained flame? Again, these are all things that I've read online, never actually tried them for myself, so I'm going to give that a try. I'm going to reproduce, or I'm going to produce some char cloth because my stocks are getting quite low, so I'm going to do that and hopefully going to harvest some chestnuts. I didn't see too many on my walk in unfortunately so I'm not sure if I've been beaten to that by other humans and squirrels but I'm certainly going to try and harvest some chestnuts to take them home and as is always the case I'm constantly going to be looking around me trying to identify species as part of the tree and plant ID masterclass that I'm doing. So that's what I've got lined up for this evening, overnight and tomorrow morning so why don't you join me and see how I get on. I've got to a new location in the woods. I normally go to an area that's been used in the past for bushcrafting. There's a, a debris shelter there, there's a fire area, there's some seating. But I fancy doing something a little bit different. And I'm really pleased I am because on the way in I've seen lots of downed dead standing or downed silver birch. So I've been harvesting that. I've just spotted a load of it over there that's peeling off in my hand. So I want to show you that later on. And I've also found a nice area that's quite dark at the moment, a lot of overhead coverage. But as you can see out there, nice open area. So I'm hoping that in the morning and throughout, you know, as, as the night wears on, that that allows me to get a little bit more natural light coming in here. So fingers crossed, um, I'm still in the community woodland and I've not strayed outside of it. And um, we'll see how this gets on as an overnight location tonight. So I'm going to set my tarp up, going to start the fire going and all of the usual um, pre-nights, pre-bedtime routines if you like, get the tea on and hopefully you'll join me along the way. Let's see if I can tick off some of those things that I wanted to address.
Well, I'm pleased to say that we have lift off with the fire situation. As soon as I got here, I put together a very rudimentary, but to be perfectly honest, it's holding up quite well, tripod. I've got slung below that via some bank line, a toggle, which you can probably just make out there above the billy can. In the billy can, I'm boiling some water and pasta. And as you can see below that, I have a fairly substantial fire that I'll keep feeding throughout the evening. And I was very pleased to say that I got that started using scraped birch bark and a very, very less effort or far little, far, far little effort, far less effort than what I had to take the other day. And it was um, what I did was that I locked my arm out. I put my fist on my boots, holding my knife, and then I pulled the ferro rod back towards me. So a far more focused direction of sparks. And as you saw earlier in the video, I was able to get that on just a few strikes of the ferro rod. Of course, my target was one and I missed that, but still managed to get a fire going quite quickly. So all things are heading towards a nice uh, pasta, chicken sauce, mushrooms, and some chorizo later on this evening. Morning folks, the morning after the night before, and it was a bit of a chilly night, I must admit. Most of this year I've been sleeping out in the with the same inflatable mat, same bivy bag, same sleeping bag, which is a snug pack discovery, a very old one, and sometimes a silk sleeping bag liner. But even with the silk sleeping bag liner last night, I had to put on the thermal top and it still felt a bit chilly. So I think that's my, my body's way and nature's way of telling me to retire that sleeping bag now for the rest of the year and bring out my winter one. Still a good night's sleep though. It's 8.30 and I've only just woken up. So not a bad night's sleep at all, just a little interrupted here and there. I'm not planning on having breakfast this morning because I need to, to get back home. I've got a few commitments, but before I do, there's a couple of extra things that I want to tick off and capture on video. I want to have another few practices at scraping some birch bark using my, and then using my ferro rod to get a flame. Managed it last night, was quite happy with it. Just want to have a few more practices this morning. And I also want to have that little play around using the pine resin that I brought with me, just to see if that will easily take a spark as well, or whether I need to step up to using a lighter and then using the resin as a, as a, as a lighter extension, if you like, to give me a longer burning flame and of course on the way back I want to see if I can get any chestnuts so let's get cracking with those things and I can get back home and do the fatherly thing the family man thing Here's that pine resin that I've been talking about elsewhere in the video and if I can get this close enough to the camera you should be able to see it. It's still quite liquidy, it's still quite gloopy, I believe that's the correct botanical term, gloopy. And I've had this in storage since probably the early summer of this year so it's kept quite well, it hasn't hardened at all and I just want to see if it can take a spark. And as you can see, the answer is quite easily. Clearly a lot of what you're seeing there is the birch bark burning that the pine resin was on. However, hopefully you saw the pine resin took the spark first and then ignited the rest. So that's a nice, a nice little tick in the box knowing that um, that, 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 that works. Certainly keep an eye out for that in the future.
Well, that's the end of another overnighter. My motor is parked just over there, so I'm just about to jump in that and go home and spend a weekend with the family. A couple of takeaways from me from this overnighter. One is to swap out my sleeping bag and bring my winter sleeping bag into play. And the other one was actually caught off camera. You saw me towards the end of this video striking my ferro rod against my knife, catching some sparks onto some shaven, fluffed up silver birch. And I still was, it, it felt awkward, it just didn't feel right. And I'm looking at my ferro rod, I'm hoping, I don't know if you can see this or not, possibly not. But along my ferro rod, I think you can see it there, it's starting to develop these kind of circular notches on it, which makes the knife bump along it. And those circular notches are being made by, it's not jimping, but by this indentation in the back of my knife, purpose built for striking ferro rods. And I just don't think it's very good, to be perfectly honest. Off camera, I actually used a dedicated striker on my ferro rod. Felt far more comfortable, far more fluid, and within only two strikes, I was able to get two more bundles of silver birch burning. So whilst it looks cool using the back of the knife, and clearly, you know, the, the more things you can do with your knife, I guess, the better. It's less equipment to carry. Whilst it looks cool, I just don't think the design on that TBS Grizzly is that good. It seems to develop these notches in the ferro rod itself. It's another nail in the coffin for me in terms of the TBS Grizzly. I just don't like it as a knife. I know that lots of people do. I'm not knocking the knife. It just doesn't work for me. I am looking at a Mora Garberg once Paul Kirtley publishes his, uh, his long-term review on it. So that was a takeaway. The other takeaway was if you're going to try and get some sweet chestnuts come much earlier in the season. I couldn't find a single one above my small thumbnail size that I could take away with me. Every single one had been cracked open I guess by the visiting squirrel population or other foragers. So I need to come much earlier in the season. If only I'd spent a bit of time when I was here a few weeks ago on the Conversation with Chestnuts course that I went on, I'll link to it up here. If only I spent a bit of time then, then we could have had some sweet chestnuts with the kids. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please do give it a thumbs up as always. If there's somebody in your network that you think would benefit from watching it or might find it interesting, you know where that share button is. And as always, if you're not yet a subscriber, and thank you so, so much to those people that are, if you're not yet a subscriber, in this bottom of the screen down here, I don't know why I look down at my hand, in this bottom of the screen down here, there'll be a small circular button with me with a hood up pretending to hold a lightsaber branch. Click on that and you'll become a subscriber and you won't miss out on any future videos. As always, thank you for joining me on another overnighter in my local woods and I'll see you soon. Cheers.